it wouldn't be a bad idea for Renegade. Divine Aurora will just pick Kestrel if it's left open. We know they love to do it. They played well. Nancy played really well on Kestrel despite losing that game. So I think it wouldn't be a bad it wouldn't be a bad idea just to pick it up first if it's let through, which it most likely will be. Probably going to be a Lyra pick unless um, Renegade have got something special like the Fortress again. If they're going to first pick it, that would be a really risky call because I think Divine Aurora would just not pick Kestrel. Then Fortress is a, a bit worse. Isn't that good at diving in? Um, the attack of the pack isn't as useful as compared to against Kestrel. So really thinking about what they want to pick. They didn't expect Lyra to be let through. So now they're thinking, do we want to pick it or do we want to uh, give it over to a Divine Aurora? No, they're going to pick the Kestrel for themselves. Renegade deciding that, no, 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 Neon C, we want to play uh, Kestrel and Tezzerboy. Or Spaghetti, yep. sorry. <laughs> they want to play Kestrel the, this time round in this third match between Renegade and Divine Aurora. And it's just down to what Divine Aurora can pick up. They generally want to pick up that Black Feather for themselves. Uh, that has been quite the pattern for um, Neon C on that hero. Because let, let us be honest right now, Mini. There's not much weapon carries uh, in lane that is um, quite better unless of course you count in jewel which is i personally think a very niche pick but divine aurora settling for the for the fortress for themselves we, we have got renegade on a side and definitely because this draft just feels like divine aurora would be on a side because they love kestrel renegade love fortress but no they've just been swapped over Divine Aurora going, okay, if you're going to play our game, we're going to play your game. We're going to pick up the Fortress, most likely going to be in the jungle position. And now, I don't think Divine Aurora need to ban Catherine or Batiste because they'll just go with the same draft that Renegade went with in the last game and uh, do and try and execute it the same. This is really interesting. They might go for the Rhyme ban. Rhyme's not great against Fortress, but it still might just to, to follow up what happened in the last game. That wouldn't be a bad decision. I think Catherine would also be quite a good ban. They're going to ban the Lyra instead. So yeah, they don't want to play it with Fortress. Uh, Fortress is actually quite good against Lyra because you have the have the bleed. But instead of instead of that, they're just going to they're just going to ban it away. Yeah, I, I personally don't quite like the Lyra being banned out. But I guess with the Lyra being banned out, uh, you force the side of Renegade to remove the Rhyme from the table, and there you go, the Rhyme being removed, and the side of Divine Aurora can just easily pick up that Catherine for themselves. We saw them just playing Catherine over and over again, and they just played it so well as well. There is, there is no reason as to not picking up the Catherine. They, they're just so good on that particular hero. Although, I personally, at this point in time, in this current matter, I think Finn is, is seeing an emergence for a reason, and the fortified hell that's provided by Polite Company is just so strong. And yet, we are not seeing... That Divine Aurora just prioritizing on this fin or even putting emphasis on this fin. Mm -hmm. We are seeing a lot of Lyra's and Catherine coming up from Divine Aurora's, but and, and Arden as well in this particular game, but we are not seeing much fin. And is there a reason why is it because of the slow, does the speed or or does it not gel well with the other heroes on the fold? Well, Finn certainly doesn't gel well with Fortress at all. Finn is the uh, second slowest hero in the game for uh, one of the quickest... Hey, the opposites quickest attract! Is, uh, not necessarily in, in Vainglory, because Paul just needs to go in, and Finn looks really weird when he's running, and so it's just, it just doesn't work well together. Maybe Finn um, in a different draft, but once they, once they picked the Fortress, it's very unlikely they're going to go with that. Maybe it's something Renegade would like to play a bit more. I think, yeah, Divine Aurora probably going to pick up, either go with that as a Captain Fortress, or just pick up their captain now. Maybe last counter pick the carry. No, they're going to oh, pick the Kestrel. Oh. No, they are going for hard Kestrel counters. Fortress attack of the pack will follow Kestrel when she's invisible. Petals Munions will follow Kestrel when she's invisible. So, uh, yeah, uh, Divine Aurora were clearly expecting this. They were clearly uh, thinking, right, what we want to first pick Kestrel. And if the enemy does first pick Kestrel, we have our counters ready. We have our Fortress, we have our Petal. Probably going to be a weapon Petal in lane. That's what we've seen more of. But it really depends on what the jungle is. If they go for something like a, uh, a crawl now in the jungle, obviously that could be a crystal petal. Yep. Uh, if crystal petal, I'm not. Uh, I mean, weapon petal can be played in jungle as well. We we see that coming out from Bran Chong and Sync One on the weapon petal just plays so well on it. Just very comfortable on it as well. So I'm not surprised if the side of Divine Aurora maybe have screamed with Bran Esports and picked up a thing or two from them. Mm -hmm. 
And if that's the case, then, you know, Brandy Swords, or rather not Brandy Swords, but the side of Divine Aurora can just round the comp up. A very unpopular opinion right here, but with a CP Reza in that of lane. But, you know, that is that. Yeah, that would work really well. I agree. That would be a really good draft for Divine Aurora. But I think what Renegade is here is perhaps even go CP Kestrel uh, with, a, with the Finn and uh, then go for a weapon laner, maybe a weapon jewel or glaive. Nope, they're going to go Kestrel Celeste. They're going to go old school, poke comp, Kraken at 15 minutes. And this comp was known for being so quick at taking Kraken at 15 minutes. Now Kraken is 20% easier to take 15 minutes in. So I think if Divino don't have vision, about 15 minutes, 10 seconds, Kraken will be unleashed for Renegade if, they're, if they are alive. So against the Celeste, what are you going to do? Obviously Scarf could work, but they're going to go Taka. Really smart. It's similar to Reza. I don't know why SEA aren't going to pick Reza at all, despite how strong I think he is. They're, they're going to go for the tackle instead. So that means um, a lot of dive onto Kestrel and onto Celeste. Divine Aurora, I think, have got the slight edge, but it's really down to how good this Captain Fortress can be against the Finn. Uh, this is uh, this is a draft that I'm not expecting, quite expecting, because I personally think Reza just does so much better. You can just you, because you are basically a walking aftershock, right? For for Reza, in in the early game, you are kind of a walking aftershock, and you will be building onto an aftershock as well. So the amount of bursts you have on this Castro on this last would just be insane. And with your Nether form detonator, you can mm. apply fire starter onto all three. It, basically just both of the carries in, in general and can easily just burst them down with the troublemaker if not in scorcher as well so it, it quite baffles me as to why like you mentioned south asia is so resistant on this um reza being picked up but Taka not a quite not quite a bad pick and with the mortal wound as well you will reduce healing from that fountain that, that finn will definitely build and that fortified health as well and if you go for that you know shatter glass in the clockwork in the dragon's uh, eye then maybe Maybe, maybe, just maybe you can easily just, you know, flick, snap of the fingers, just burst Castro into nothingness and Celeste into nothingness as well. So one of, the questions, one of the questions I want to ask is, what build do you think Celeste is going to go this patch? Oh. Massive, massive changes to the Crystal Path. We're not going, well, I hope we're not going to see Frostburn, Eve, Clockwork, Myth, Frostburn, Eve, um, Clockwork, Myth every game. So we're probably going to see something different. Do you think we're going to see a frost burn against this Taka? Or is Shingy just going to go for maybe Shatterglass into Clockwork or Shatterglass into Dragon's Eye? What do you think Shingy might go for? I think shatter glass in the clockwork, and the only reason being because with a dragon's eye, generally you want to build up stacks. It's very much like broken myth, right? You want to stay in fight, you want to build up stacks. But with a Taka and you know a fortress running around on the fold. You just don't quite have that liberty to just be, you know, in the fight for an extended period of time to go all the way up to nine sex. So maybe the aftershock, no, sorry, not aftershock. <laughs> not aftershock, aftershock not it's aftershock. The new meta. Shatter glass into clockwork will definitely work um, very, very well in this case going up against Divine Aurora. But that is my opinion. What about you, Minimizer? Are you expecting a Dragon's Eye coming out? Or would you expect the last, uh, you know, popular one, which is a uh, spell? Fire, which I've yet to find a footing in this meta. Uh, I think I've, I'm yet to find a use for Spellfire on anyone. I suppose on CP Gwen it can work quite well, similarly with CP Blackfeather, maybe as a fourth item, but I doubt it's going to be played at all on this list, especially given how much burst Taka has. The real damage over time just is completely countered by his Kaku. If he goes in Kaku, Spellfire now pointless and uh, it won't deal any significant kind of damage. I'm expecting she needs to go Shatter Glass, maybe into Clockwork, maybe into Broken Myth third item, if Spitfire gets in defense. Tezzer Boy, gonna be forced to boot his way, Kaisen over him. Will it be enough damage? Neonsi gonna jump in, but there's a healing fast. Neonsi is going way too aggressive for that first blood, and in the end, does fall. Finn just far too tempting under turret. He was one HP, but he based him with the healing flask, and Neonsi taking too many turret shots, so I think that was just um, a slight misplay from, uh, from Divine Horror, just you saw how tempting Finn was, though. Yep, I, I mean, if this was late game and Divine Aurora was just, uh, is, is just, you know, losing out big time, then I would say Divine Aurora was just pure desperate to just make plays. But in this early game, just jumping in, I mean, fine, it is the quickest way back to base, but like. 
you don't want to give a first blood to a team like Renegades, like Spaghetti on that Castro. We all know how strong Spaghetti is on range Castro, or you no know, range heroes very much like Castro and even that of Celeste. And you, you don't really want to give it any way to capitalize on the damage. Fire now, maybe caught out. Could be but Spaghetti, as you said, doing loads of work on this weapon, Kestrel. Petal's still in lane, so that means that Devonor can't go too aggressive. Trin is picked up by Spaghetti in the end. Gonna now go to lane to try and pick up his, as much of his farm as he can. One minion, maybe two is gonna die. Now he's gonna get most of that wave. So that's really good for Spaghetti, able to farm up. He's not going for the energy battery first, and he's quite low on energy. So maybe he could learn a thing or two from Yonsi's Kestrel, go for that early energy battery. Uh, then again, he does want to get as much gold as possible, so he's gonna rotate to the jungle, as will Petal. So, uh, yeah, very defensive rotations from both these teams. Just captains in lane. Fortress wants to push the wave under turret, but uh, Tesla Boy is there to try and stop that from happening. Yeah, Spaghetti, he, I suppose the reason why he hasn't picked up the energy battery is now he can pick up a Soa Blade a bit earlier. And so he guarantees that even, no matter how much gold he's got, he can go to shop uh, now. So he wouldn't be able to get the Soa Blade without having, if he had an energy battery. So that's why uh, Spaghetti's going for it. And a 1.5k gold lead already for Renegade. Yeah, Will be Spaghetti. Able to shop. Spaghetti has not been able to shop. He has not got the sword blade already. Spitfire is going to try and do a bit of damage. So will Margin and Petal getting hit by the super supernova attacker. Able to run away from the core collapse, but cannot run away from basic attacks. Spaghetti is going to go back up to lane. He's had fantastic wave control to keep these minions just pushed on his side all the time. If I was Petal, I'd be so annoyed at Spaghetti because that wave is just not advanced towards Petal at all. Now Petal is going to push it as a... Uh, he wants to port home to get as much items because he wants to go out to Jungle Shop, but it was just completely stopped by the Vinyl Aura. They rotated quite well to stop that from happening. Wasn't enough, though, because Pataka did fall in the end. And now Spaghetti does secure the last hit and uh, wants to port home, yeah. I expect to see probably Soul Blade and an energy battery with, with some crit items being built. Because we saw Spaghetti, just, if he runs out of energy, he's kind of useless. But now we're going to see the weapon infusion instead, so much more aggressive from Spaghetti than, uh, than what Neonti does. Yep, and this is what we constantly see coming out from Spaghetti on his Castro. Every single time he has got a Sorrow Blade, he'll always want to buy and put an infusion in his pocket just so when he needs to push or just when Chingy actually picks up his own infusion as well. Taka picking Chingy. Chingy caught out one versus three basically in the jungle shop. A bit too busy uh, trying to pick up even Harvest as the first item. That I. Do not like, I'm going to be honest. One shot, going to be dodged out, but Turret is going to go down. Spaghetti in the end does, uh, does do a nice rotation, but he could be in a lot of trouble. He's going to push the wave, this is risky. If he manages to port home, that'll be worth it. And yeah, they're not going to even try and catch him. He's going to try and go with tier 2 Turret. He knows that Celeste is in a bad position, Spitfire is there. So uh, Shingy could be caught out. Gorg Laps does land onto Fortress, but not on Spitfire. Now um, Finn is there as well. And Singy able to secure one, trip, one hit uh, back camp. Will he be able to get the second? No, Spitfire gets that. Uh, Expressive is available. Is she if I going to go in? No, he's not. Kestrel also on the other side of the map. He's trying to run oh. away from Yonsi. Yonsi with those pets. Knows where Kestrel is. That is going to be a base cap and a good shot. But where is Spaghetti? He's going to be caught out. The acts are coming on enough. Dragon Ball contract will be dropped by the attacker. And that is a nice skill for Petal. So well played in the end by the Vanuora. So what do you think about this? And once again, the Vanuora are going to get Tesla just turning this game around. But still not that many, not that much gold in their favour. But they're now getting this gold mine. So what do you think about the finally this Eve of Harvest pick on Celeste? I don't like it because it gives you 55 crystal power. And uh, Clockwork actually gives you more CP than Eve of Harvest this patch. So I'll, Storm, pretty late. I, I would have preferred the Clockwork pick up over the Eve of Harvest. But I guess, you know, extra sustain is sustain overall. And this current meta where the team fights is just so much longer. I guess sustain can be a priority and should be prioritized in RNG's um, minds. But... I'm with you. I'm with you. I don't like the Eve of Harvest being picked up as the first item on any mages. Like you said, 55 crystal power as compared to Clockwork 60. And Clockwork just gives you so much more at the, you know, in the long run. You know, extra cooldown, extra energy. You can just put out so much more at one time. And with, maybe Eve of Harvest will work for, for say, Scarf, right? Because uh, your Spitfire do not stay on a fold. But, you know, it spits out, it hits someone, it disappears. Or, if you know, if you do not hit anybody, it disappears. Whereas for Chingy, the Evil Harvest is just, it's just kind of iffy as an item. You, you drop a Helio there, you don't pop it, you don't, you don't get any, any healing, you don't get any passive healing coming up from Evil Harvest. You, you need to hit someone with it. 
So that is one thing, you know, maybe Clockwork would have just been such a better pick overall. Yeah, so far, gonna go in, gonna get a bit of ace tank, but he's in the slightly more force squad. Now it's landed both carries. Oh, Devon Hora, Pedro gonna... And there's a Kitan over the, um, the quibble from Taka, but he's gonna try and run away. He cannot dodge the basic attack. Sentry OP, one basic. Will he get the second? Yes, but it's not enough. X lets you onto the minion, and he will try and run away. Kitan, no, he gets rooted. Taka's gonna not die to the minion. How is he alive? Spitfire OP, but he will fall to most likely Xing Yi as soon as he is spotted out. Petal, meanwhile, on the back line, is picking up Keshul. Spitfire's been caught out. Oh. Oh. Caps. That'll be a stun. That'll be a nice Kitan, and will Xing Yi be able to get the damage? Not quite. Solar Song comes through. Yonsei, though, is now diving onto Xing Yi. Even Harvest wasn't enough for Xing Yi to be able to kill Spitfire, but that is a little bit sustained. Coming up from Xing Yi now. Attack is going to try and go onto this Crystal Sentry to take it down. Full Claps does not land. Sentry is going to be taken down. Yes, defeated for the second time. Nonzi now jumping in. Shingi is going to go down, but now Kestrel's back up already. Nonzi did get the kill, but now that's respawn time as early game. Spaghetti is not going to go in onto the Nonzi. Taka is going to go in onto Shingi, though. He's going risky. One shot. He's not going to count. So with the base attack from Celeste. Base attack OP. And Celeste gets... No, Kestrel gets the kill. Shingi, in the end, does survive. <laughs> She is just surviving through it all, and I guess <laughs> you can say and you can argue that Eva Father's OP on Celeste. She right. would have got the kill five minutes ago if <laughs> Shingy just brought a shatter glass. I, I'm not taking that argument. Like, <laughs> no. well, may maybe true, maybe true. They, they could have just easily ended a fight five minutes ago if Celeste has just got extra buzz. But Eva Father's provided energy, and provided sustain. So hey, I guess it's. Uh, it's a good pickup currently, but anyways, the side of Renegades picking up the gold mine for themselves is extending the gold lead um, slightly further. And in fact, they had already a gold lead about a thousand, um, about a two, a two minutes, a couple of minutes ago. So now they are sitting at about uh, still a thousand gold. I, I thought it was a two k earlier on, but I, I guess, I guess you know, Renegades playing, still playing the slow game, just wanting Chingy to get more items and Chingy. Going for that broken myth. Yeah, broken, broken myth does make sense. It's quite a good ice in this patch, actually. It gives the 30% shield pierce seems OP, but of course you have to remember shield pierce got changed. It no longer ignores a certain percentage of armor. It decreases, oh sorry, shield. It now decreases shield by that percentage. Doesn't sound like a big change, but it is a massive change when you think when you do the math behind it, because true damage is really good, really important, and that's what broken myth essentially gave you. Whereas now it means your Aegis has thirty percent less shield, so it's it's not as doesn't do as much work as before, but it still is very effective. And Spitfire obviously is going to build an Aegis. It would have got the tier one shield. So Shingy going for a slightly different Celeste build this time, not going for the massive damage um, with the Shattered Glass, maybe a Dragon's Eye. So it's very likely Dragon's Eye will be the third item because if he doesn't get that, it will just have almost no crystal power, which is really not where you want to be on Celeste. So he's going to probably build that as, as his third item because I think with the problem with the a, Eve of Harvest, Broken Myth, Clockwork build is you have all the utility with no damage. Because with that build you have about the same amount of crystal power as someone with a with a shatter glass and uh, and an infusion. So you're really you're really putting yourself behind in terms of CP just for a little bit more utility. So yeah, I think dragons are most likely gonna be that third item. Uh, it's an alright build. I, I prefer to see damage on Celeste because yeah, Eve of Harvest has like one third of the damage that Shatter Glass does. And 25% of that damage is then hit healed. We're going to see a little bit of an engage. There's a boy, Flight Company. Goldmine's being started uh, by Spitfire, actually. So his team are going to take a little bit of damage from that. Scout Trap popped by Tesla Boy, waiting to see who's going to go in. Spaghetti is not, because he wants to put home to get that second Tyrant's Monocle. It's going to be about a half full gold mine, about 200 gold, I think. Um, it's going to be paid out. I can't quite see. But it looks like they're actually going to stop. Divine don't want to be the ones to take it. And it's just going to reset back to full. And so it was actually three quarters full in the end, that gold mine. So a little bit more worth it for both teams to take. And uh, Divine Aurora has looked to back off. Petal cannot afford a second Tornado Trigger quite yet. 300 gold away. So yeah, both teams going to back off. Yep, I'm really liking the build coming up from Spitfire 101 on this Tarko that Shattered Glass being picked up and not quite completing that Storm Crown as well. I mean, you do definitely need an early banner for just the extra clear speed, but you know, with that Shattered Glass, you can just put out so much more damage in the early game against squishies like Chingy and Spaghetti on their respective heroes. Um, very mage like heroes, so your, your X Threat, so your Kaiser will definitely hurt a bunch, but the issue what I'm seeing here right now is with the changes in health, 
then Spitfire really needs that Aftershock as well, somewhere in the line. If not, then at least that Dragon Eye, just for the extra 180 crystal power on top of the 85 as well. And, and that way, Spitfire can just put up so much more damage, but now a fight will be had. damage. Gonna work to to one to Shingy, but there was a lovely call cast, a triple quibble, and a solar storm made for um, side of Renegade, but in the end, it's not that much damage being done. A Crucible and the Forced Accord meant that there wasn't as much burst as maybe they wanted. Shingy didn't be dived on. A block from Spitfire this time, and another double quibble by Tessa Boy. Playing the spin so well. Nyonsi taking a bit of hope from the Kestrel. Gonna try and put back as much as he can. One shot onto Margin in the end. Attacker trying to sneak if he can. Tessa Boy is quite low, so the Expert Zoo and Kitan combo will kill him, but he has got a fountain. Is it a bait? Tezzer Boy's going low, but they can dive onto Kestrel instead. Fountain not used by Tezzer Boy. That is going to be a dead spaghetti. Shingy is the last one left alive. No damage. No sustain is not. Sustain is not enough. And Yonsi is going to try and kite this sentry. And that will be a sentry and a gold mine for the Bunwar. Well, that fight definitely, you know, was a very long one. And it was in. You would think that the Eve of Harvest definitely allowed sustain for spaghetti. Oh, sorry, Chingy. But it was just not enough because the amount of damage coming out from the side of Divine Aurora was just too much for, you know, your Eve of Harvest to even sustain through you. And of course, the back off and then coming back. I must say, Tether Boy played well in that team fight. But. One big issue with Tesla Boy, and as we all know, and the entirety of Southeast Asia actually know this, the biggest weakness of Tesla Boy is not pop, not popping the fountain, if not then popping it way too late. And in this case, he was just not popping the fountain at all, and thus kind of causing the team fight. I would not say that was why the team fight went wayward, went southwards for the side of uh, RNG. But Divine Aurora definitely played to their strengths as well. Going in, trying to take someone down. If they can't do it, they back off again. And then they go back in again. Because looking at the entire team comp, they do not quite have the sustain that Chingy has. Or Tazza Boy has with a fortified health coming out from you know, those polite companies. So they just need to work like assassins. They need to play like assassins. Go in, come out. Go in, come out. Go in, come out. And that is what they did in the team fight. And they, they, they did it very, very well. Speaking of Assassin, Spitfire trying to sneak to the back line, but will be spotted out by a polite company, and uh, he's going to back off. I was a bit worried that Spitfire was going to end up going for the Storm Crown just because of the slot efficiency that he had. So I was watching what he built, but he ended up building an Aegis and then working towards Aftershock. So that's really good. I wouldn't have liked Storm Crown, especially this late into the game. Tesla Boy will be spotted porting home. And so this could be a half full gold mine for Divine Aurora. Yeah, why not? It's 14 minutes in. Will they be able to get it in time? They have five seconds. Yeah, five seconds to half health, five seconds down to zero health. Divine Aurora should be able to. No, maybe not. Will they get the burst? Yes, they will just barely. The Kraken Awakens, decent payout for Divine Aurora. That was close, but they do manage to pick up their gold mine. Put the gold to dead even, so from dead even to ever so slightly ahead in their favour. And Taka still not quite with the aftershock needs. No, he's going to go broken myth. What? I have no idea what Spitfire's building. He's building into everything: storm crown, aftershock, broken myth, all at the same time. But he wants that twelve percent shield pierce against uh, the Aegis on Spaghetti and the Tier One armor on Shingy. Then that would make sense. I mean, your piercing shard will will help you you know just reduce the amount of a shield coming out from chingy and spaghetti uh, or rather spaghetti more than chingy because chingy now just sitting on a light shield and uh, not much defense uh, overall and now kraken is being taken for us car lands on nyonsi yeah crucible used a bit late uh, didn't actually block anything because nyonsi managed to trampoline away from the quibble but that's gonna be a stun double stun from the core collapse quibble is dodged out once again the chitin by taka over the storm over the um Celeste Ultra was actually really well played to tank that damage for Petal. If I expect to win once again, dodging the stun this time, but that's the quibble. Will he be able to survive at the fountain? Yes, he will. Solar Storm not up, neither is the one shot. Yonsei going very low, forced to trampoline away very, so defensively. Has got three ult charges, but has no minions to heal himself up with. Now, this is look at this Kraken is already up to a third. Wait, sorry, I meant to say a half health. RNG does so much onto this Kraken, and Martin's going to try and steal it, but I highly doubt it's going to be able to get yeah, not against this Celeste Kestrel. And now RNG with the Kraken buff. Renegade trying to go in. Tessa Boy is going to use that Fly Company. He's going to go aggressive, has not got the, the force to cord up, but it looks like they're going to Renegade is going to take the sentry. No, they're going to leave it. It's going to try and push this Kraken, possibly for the win. Kraken has a lot more health. And there's four turrets standing between them and the Vanquist. Yep, and we know that, you know, Castle and Celeste are generally very, very good with objectives. And in that team fight, 
the Shattered Glass picked up by Chingy very late into the game definitely do did pay off for him as well. Forza card once again. Does land and Margin not in a great position. Nyonsi doesn't manage to trample it away. Kestrel going to be de dealing with loads of damage onto Nyonsi in the end. Chingy did get died by second but it was not enough. Kestrel gets the shutdown in the end on Nyonsi. And now Margin going to take this one shot one kill to the face. There's going to be Taka diving on, onto Spaghetti, but so onto Shingy. But a lovely fountain. He said there's a boy sometimes late. Not in that fight. Perfect timing. Keeping Shingy alive. Taka's trying to run, run, run away. Margin's going to get crippled. Going to get, uh, going to get uh, stunned by the Celeste uh, core collapse as well. Taka's able to pop back to the base, but this might just be the game. Nancy's up in three seconds. What are Renegade going to do? Spaghetti wants to go in. Shingy does not. Taka's been spotted out, but Spaghetti's like, right, we can win this. Just go for it, guys. Let's do this. Spaghetti onto the turret, onto the first rain crystal turret. He's going to go very aggressive. Nyonsi jumping in. Who's going to get the 1v1? It will be Spaghetti most likely, but there's a, uh, onto Celeste with the expert suit. And Nyonsi's trying to do the damage. Spaghetti onto the turret. He's going to take the turret down, but he will fall to the attackers' expert suit. Now, what can Tessa Boy do? They're going to get the Kraken down most likely first and then focus onto the rover. Yeah, smart plays. Uh, that's a little bit late on your force to court, and everyone just splits away from Finn. He's sad. He can't run. He's going to go as far oh, away he's going from for the base. He's going for the sneaky spot, but he knows it's not going to work when they're following you. The base, though, is exposed. There's there's a Kestrel. There's um, That's it. They can actually sneak to the base. The margin's picked up five scout traps, so he's going to put some vision. The game is not yet over. Yep, it's not yet over. And we do see, looking over to margin, margin actually has got a coat of plates in hand as well, proving it's spaghetti on this Kestrel, just putting out a ton of damage. Although I personally would not like the um or rather I, I really want to see an extra crucible coming out i mean for the force accord as well with that echo definitely coming in to tesla boy um later on in the game and echo you know a echo force accord can definitely be blocked up by mm. spitfire as well i know i know people tell me the hell just do not justify you know the crucible pickup at all but overall neon c and spitfire is constantly getting caught out by those force accord that margin isn't blocking at all i'm not trying to tr throw shade here but margin, like it. <laughs> margin really needs to start blocking out those force accord i mean looking over the board Right, Tesla Boy only has got one charge of it. There is no echo build on him, so it's quite easy because if you if Tesla Boy manages to chain one force card into a solar core collapse, and it'll be done for. It's gonna be the engaged attack the back. Expert suit does go on to Kestrel. Spitfire gonna do the kite but now he has no damage. Has to try and run away. Shingy gonna take the bottom of the damage from Petal, but Kestrel gets the return kill. Spaghetti gonna do the damage, but now it's Spitfire onto the back line, gonna do as much damage as he can. But Spaghetti will be able to run away for now. Is Saka gonna dive the tier 3 turret? Does not look like it. Kraken is up, but I don't think Divine Aura have the damage. Taka's still with the Stormguard banner, but I want to talk about this Taka build. So, Divine Aura are clearly on the path that everyone says Aftershock is OP, but they they completely disagree. They just don't build it. They haven't built it any game today. But if I could go on Spaghetti now, but he's not gonna go to. So, in the end, he went for the uh, Shattered Glass into Clockwork uh, instead of going into Aftershock, and so. Wait. It's just a really different idea. Spitfire could be caught out. There's a flare. Spitfire going to be pulled in. Nope, he's going to block it by quite easily with the reflex block. And now Kestrel, he's got to turn around. Spitfire, he cannot dodge forever. Maybe I'm wrong. Yes, he can dodge forever. He will run away. But this could be a crack. And unless uh, Spitfire manages to get a couple of healing camps. Yeah, he's uh, centuries defeated only for the first time, though. Spitfire's going to pull home, so this could be a Kraken for Renegade. They're going to start it up. They know that Taka was so low and probably forced to port. But Divine Aurora is there just to oversee and make sure that Renegade don't take the Kraken. Taka's going to be back, so we're ready for a full team fight, and it's going to be close. Yep, it will be close, but Taka, Taka, Jet, definitely a very sneaky fox with those Kaku and dodges of those glimmer shots coming out from Spaghetti in that fight. And Head Taka just went down there, one shot, one kill, connecting on to Neon C. And maybe Divine Aurora will not be looking just yet for this fight with Neon C not being at full health. However, we do see infusions pop across the board, total six infusions. And now Chingy, right? Spotlight is on Chingy because a fight will be happening. Yeah, Vine's going to break out attack of the pack. Was used. Lots of damage going on to Tesla Boy in the end. Neon C going to do a little bit of poke, but not that much. Uh, Tesla Boy's going for a very similar build to Margin, going for that double weapon power defense. Double metal jacket on uh, on Margin, but only metal jacket and coat of plates on Tesla Boy. I'm 
really confused why Nunzi would pick up a Crucible. As we said, Crucible got worse in terms of giving you defense. Aegis got better, and Finn's not building an Echo. So there's no reason for Nunzi not to get an Aegis. It will keep him alive longer. Tezzerboy is by himself. That's going to be expected to. And uh, no Kaito from Taka there. He's waiting to see if he can dodge something. Force Cord blocked up pretty simply by margin in the end. Nunzi still has his Crucible available, probably for a core collapse, maybe for an active camera trap. There's almost everyone's fully built except for Shingy and Spitfire, the junglers, still waiting out. Tezzerboy actually much further behind his build than margin is. Still needs to get that full metal jacket. And uh, Spitfire still farming up. Can't quite afford his uh can't quite afford his broken myth. And Nuancy is, is fully built on this uh on the petal. Kraken being so like the pack used by margin. That 60 second cooldown, so it means they're gonna go in. Nuancy taking a lot of damage though from the Celeste. Solar Storm oh! the Celeste gets the Kraken, probably with the Solar Storm. Nuancy gonna get the fountain and the Kraken buff has been stopped. Uh, Taka trying to dodge away. We'll dodge away from the core collapse. Lovely jump from Nyonzi. He's basically dead, but not before he gets the uh, Celeste himself. Titan over there to come out. Double quibble by the Finn. Now Spaghetti is going to be x soon. The, that's an interesting block on the Force of Core because why not, I guess. Now Spitfire going to try and run in on Spaghetti. Spaghetti going to try and kite for as long as he can. Atta Kamen Trap is down. Where's Spaghetti? There he is doing the damage. Margin is the last one alive, but he's going to fall. Kraken's bearing down on the vein. In the end, Spaghetti's, uh, Spaghetti's Kestrel on Renegade wins them the game. Wins them the game, and Spaghetti playing very well on that Castro, although, you know, there has been a lot of opportunities for Renegade to just go in for the backdoor, but seeing how much vision sat down by Margin on that little, you know, fortress, it just seems so impossible in the end, and we saw in a lot of team fights, side of Divine Aurora definitely allowing, or rather definitely pushing the side of Renegade to back into the base, forcing them to back off. And I had thought at somewhere in the team fight, maybe Spitfire will just outplay Spaghetti, dodging out those active camo that they, that didn't quite happen. And the game goes to Spaghetti and Team Renegades. Definitely good game. Well played to both sides. Yeah, definitely some interesting builds to look through and think about. I think Shingy's Eve of Harvest first, it kind of worked. I think as you saw, once the Shatterglass was picked up, Shingy really had a massive damage Spike, so why not pick that shutter glass up earlier, get that power spike earlier? Taka not going for the aftershock. I think it did hurt him in the end. Really hurt his burst damage, and Taka's all about burst against the Celeste and the Kestrel. So it might, would have made sense to pick that up. He went for the shutter glass into clockwork into myth. Didn't really do the do the damage he needed to. I think he should have sold his Stormguard banner late game to try and pick up the broken myth a bit earlier. But re really, really close game between the two teams. And in the end. Renegade take the series 2-1, to one, so that's what everyone would have expected Renegade winning, but no way in the manner that anyone would have expected. Yeah, it was a very, very close game between both of these teams, and Divine Aurora definitely a team to watch out for. However, they will not be advancing into the semis or finals for tomorrow, so th the next chance they have really is for next week, and see who they pair up with, who they go up against. Maybe once again, Divine Aurora can show that although they are sitting at a mere one point, or rather two points now, they have what it takes to go up against the top dogs in Vegas. Glory 8, Southeast Asia. Yep, so that is it for the first game series of the day. We're now going to head into a quick five-minute break. When we come back, we'll be watching Impunity 